do Hoshi, right? Yeah. And they could find themselves in a position that Burmese Ghoul's in was Land of Dawn. Game number two here, oh. we're still on your screens. There yep. it is. I was gonna say, we are gonna be here. jumping in too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, man. game two, already, early action as well. Um, but yeah, I, I, anything standing out of the ordinary here for you, Kim? Well, again, the emblems, uh, nothing too out of the ordinary here, I would say. Um, <laughs> The spells, though, you got the Purify from the Brutal. Again, that's going to be crucial, too, especially since RQ has all of these setups, right? You got the Minoan's, uh, Minoan's Rage from... Uh, Minoan's Fury, rather, from Brusco. You also got Bananas, I am offended. Not to mention the mm -hmm. Blazing Duet, too, from the Claude. It's not going to be easy for a Stitch, though, but uh, I think if they go the route here of being uh, aggressive early on, which is kind of what they're doing right now here up against RQ Hoshi. Oh, yeah, already. Sox are going to take some damage, but again... These are, you know, very tanky heroes that don't have a ton of damage right now, so no one's going to go down. Still a lot of CC potential, though. Brusco should be fine as well. And one thing that's great about the Minotaur, especially later on when he kind of rushes that Flask of the Oasis, it is tough to deal with, but hold on. Brusco could be the one in trouble as he's going to go down a first blood. Now Arad in trouble yeah. as well. Two kills now for Burmese Ghouls. Exactly what they need here in Game 2, Kim. Yeah, level 4 too, going to be attained here by the Valentina in just a bit. I, I like how they picked this up too, compared to the Aurora that you kind of mentioned, which is also still good, but the Valentina can scale up really well care of her passive, right? Like, she can scale up to level 4 right before a major objective like the Turtle, which is really good, right? You need all of these great ultimates to pick up right now. It's all up to Nico whether you want to pick up that uh, Minotaur's ultimate, or whether even if you want to go for Octa's ultimate here would be great. Uh, Burby School started out real strong, now they're looking to take in this first turtle game and so far RRQ after that fir those first two pickoffs actually they're kind of wow. having a hard time here Bru they knew he was there brusco once again going to be the focus they forget the turtle for now they want to get the kills here the pull comes through Irad could be in trouble but look at the response now blink has to get oh. out of there he's the one to fall from octa now still going to be fighting it out for more Irad, the one to fall still bloodied here one hp banana trying to get away but it's nico that falls it's a double for soxa but rq gets on the board but now they still might try to stop burmese ghouls from getting this turtle if they can <laughs> Rusko not having that level 4 just yet. Take a look at the replay. They might be able to get, just get that turtle. Keep an eye on that. It looks like they do, but this was a great play here from both teams. I mean, a lot of response back and forth. But yeah, the turtle is taken here by Burmese Ghouls. Yeah, I like the clap back there of uh, RRQ. They kind of like, okay, you know what? Burby Schools is going full aggressive. Uh, they actually went in uh, for for the full aggression too. Uh, Brusco actually flickered out there. Oh. What's really hard here too for, for the side of uh, Burby Schools is like the the tanky front line. Like we're starting to see the damage coming out from the Nana, which we'll see even more later on. Like two kills already for Okta here, which is kind of something that Burby Schools have to watch out for, especially in these clashes. Even here on the top side, we have to check the uh the laning phase here of stitch and skylar and so far skylar has been doing well up against this bruno as compared to earlier like a lot of poke here coming out from both of our marksmen yeah he's got to be careful here though there oh, i saw socks are rolling in yep. still hungry for it though mm -hmm. they should be able to protect him good rotation and response from rq right now also the fact that i don't know if they still want to put the pressure here but like you mentioned octa having those two kills early on Will help him skill up pretty well. He does just have that magic penetration for cur like currently the arcane boots, but he'll still be working around building up. And it looks like Burmese Ghoul still wants to put the pressure here on the top side. Irad gonna spot Blink out, trying to get a little bit of extra gold here for Stitch, but ultimately resulting in nothing for now. Yeah, you see how Burmese schools also uh, positioned themselves over on the top side, right? Kind of anticipating that RQ Hoshi is, might actually create some pressure here up against Stitch. As long as he's fine, right? As long as he's able to get in his first two items, that should be good. Which is actually pretty much what the Burmese schools has been doing so far here. Four minutes in, they've been taking all of the turtles. And not to mention, like, I want to point out that Saksa has been getting all of the kills too. Which is really good for, for a Baksha here in the early game. If you think about it, it's not easy, right? To, to have this Baksha. You got the Nana. You got all of these uh, frontliners. You got the taunt from the Fred Rin. So it's not going to be easy to go up against them. But for Burmese schools, as long as they can keep this up against RRQ, have this uh, early take-ons onto the Turtles, uh, winning in all of these clashes, they should be okay. Oh. You see Nico actually popping in. 
Wow. Pick up the banana, but it's going to be Iran actually stealing it away. Yeah. And Dalar still wants more, though. He's the one to flick her in. Now has to continue the fight. Nico jumps in as well, trying to find him back. But on the run, Appraiser's Wrath comes down. Okta flickers in. Dalar somehow still alive. Ooh. But Banana goes in and gets the kill. Still going to be looking oh, for more. The they find Blink as well. RRQ able to find two kills. When really, I mean, from these ghouls, they, they, they didn't have to go for that. Yeah, for for uh, the side of Burmese schools, uh, I think RQ oh she knew that they're gonna be aggressive. They kinda answered out to their aggression oh. stitch in trouble here. Man, that's not easy. <laughs> you got all these three heroes to add up to the the force that they have. And now RQ Hoshi right now, a little bit aggressive going to the jungle side of the Burmese schools. Yeah. Okay, Nico not going to be able to connect on his own. I'm offended, but Brusco now taking the brunt of the damage. Still, will he be able to get away? He doesn't as Blink gets the kill. So still a lot of back and forth here from both teams. Kim, economically though, it's it's pretty much even, even with all the action here. And now it's the 5-5 five, five even across the board. Yeah, if the economy is kind of equal, what you kind of take a look at is, do they have the map control? How's their gold laner doing? And so far for RRQ, this is what they did in the last game, right? Getting in the map control is so vital for them, even though they didn't really uh, win those uh, early game trades up against Burmese schools, they were able, they managed to be able to take in the space. And mind you, this is a clone you're talking about. Blink, gonna try to go in for banana, banana here. Oh, he's actually okay. He is not gonna be able to get away. <laughs> Great setup once again. Spatial migration into the Requiem. Able to get a kill now on the bottom side. They're gonna focus here. Putting the pressure still, like you were mentioning, you know, you have to look at who has this kind of advantage, right? And space-wise, yeah, it's RQ. They've got two turrets. Burmese ghouls, though, they don't care right now. And they're going to be making their way to this next objective, the turtle. If they can secure this one, it'll help them just a little bit deal with this. But right now, look at this. RQ doesn't want to go ahead and just give this away. They want to fight for it and get this positioning. Burmese ghouls getting the first turret of the game for themselves here on the top side with Dalar doing the work. But nothing committing just yet. They're going to back off. Socks are going in with the rest of the team. Nico has the I'm offended himself. Goes in right for Brusco. Brusco waiting for the team to come in. Delar goes in. One, two punch. Gets the kill. And Brusco out of the picture here. Now down a member. Burmese ghouls for the taking for this turtle. Unless RQ Hoshi can do something. Yeah, like what Delar did there too. He's actually going to recall back to the base after taking in that turret and joining in the, the side of Burmese schools here kind of adds up to the burst damage that they had. Not only do they get it in the form of like uh, Blink here with the Guinevere, but with Delar actually joining in the fights, it's it's actually pretty good here for Burmese schools. But Delar also understands that he kind of needs to take back the space that RQ Hoshi has been taking. And so far, he's doing in the split push, pretty much what the Burmese schools oh. has been doing even in the group stage. Here comes the last turtle, though. Blink. Blink could be in trouble here. Skylar going in with Blazing Duet. Going to force him back. Kyrat able to get the turtle, though, off of it. So they're happy with it. Delar able to get the next turret down to the bottom side. So the trade at cross map objectives for now. Was that worth it? Is that the good call for Burmese ghouls here, Kim? I think it's a point that uh, Burby Schools kind of understands that uh, RQ Hoshi, yeah. Okay, they've been taking in, uh, they've been winning in all of these team fights so far. So Delar, I, I like what he's doing. And this was what he has been doing even in the group stage, right? Creating the space for Burmese Schools. And you really need this, especially in the current meta that everybody really loves to go for team fights. And sometimes you don't even notice it. You don't really have that space in the map. It's going to be harder to go for those team fights, especially like once these turrets are down, you kind of have to send someone back in so it's going to be like minus one when it comes to the team fight so not only do you have to join in the team fights you have to get the map control two here for the side of burmese schools which is what Dilar has been doing so far here for for the side of burmese schools yep and with that right this uh the main thing is building up enough time for this thing for skylar here now mm -hmm. once again in the mid lane they want to go ahead and duke it out brusco taking a ton of damage goes That's in with the jump though. gets the annoying fury as well but look at the back side nico's gonna be the one to fall and now erad holding stitch back blink trying to help him out skylar now joined the fight appraisers wrath gonna come down it's stitch that falls there in the jungle so rq clapping back looking for delar he's on the run into the jungle he goes banana gonna stick to him cancels him out from the dash and still a go and might even get the kill there in the solo, but also looking at the replay here, look at how this unfolded. 
Not sure he's actually still in the chase there, by the way, on the live cam. But what a setup and what a play here from RQ. Oh, they're yeah, going to get him. Burby schools. It looks like they're going to get him. <laughs> oh, yep, yep. <laughs> Delar, you uh, tried. There it goes. Yep. Well, he was successful, though. He was able to take down that uh, second-tier tower there on the on the bottom side. And if you look at the goal, too, like it, it seems like uh, RQ Hoji is managing pretty well up against the Burmese schools here. But it's not that far of a gold lead. It's a thousand... Yeah, a thousand gold lead, at least, here for the side of RRQ. They, if they manage to take this Lord, this should be at least a little bit more space for them to, to take in at least all of the second-tier taps here for Burmese schools. Again, the space for their side. And not to mention... Like, if you look at Skylar's stats, 2-0-3 on this Claude, you saw in that last replay that he was already shredding apart all these tanky front lines that the Burmese schools had with just one blazing duet. Yeah, and with that, I mean, this is where you want to be. You know, 11 minutes in, you're, you're, you're quite beefy on this Claude here for Skylar. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's showing, right? A lot of the times, even if Brusco was out there, you know, some people might be like, oh, Brusco, what are you doing? But a lot of the times he's actually able to be a nuisance so much on this Minotaur that he's able to get a lot of resources out. And then Skylar able to shine later on with the setups. And of course, that's just how it's been so far. But now that they're playing around this Lord here, you can see Delar still putting the pressure on the top side. Yep. He picks up the Malefic Roar. He's gonna go ahead and try to get that. But there it's the tier two going down in the mid lane. Irrat keeping Soxa there at bay. They might want to respond to this. If he still gets to that base, it looks like Skylar is going to go back. Lord is going to get worked on, though, but not the mid turret in the base, half health. Now Dolar might oh, be making his way play? to cut them off here. Conceal play going to be used as well, but it gets spotted out for now. They don't commit. So again, uh, Dolar is just trying to find what he can here, Kim. Mm-hmm. Now it seems like uh, this was the same case, like this Paquito seems, seems to be a staple choice here for the Burmese schools, not only for Delar. Uh, there was also a time in the group stage that this was uh, the thing that Nico has been doing. And taking a look at the items here so far, it is going to be, wow, Skylar at least leading in terms of a gold lead here right now. 9,700 nearing already 10,000. That is way far from what Stitch has. One two zero on the Bruno. He's already gotten that wind of nature too, just in case he gets picked off here or tr or uh, gets into like a head to head here with Delar. Having that yeah. wind of nature is gonna be crucial in the team fights. It's gonna be clutch, right? Uh, that's the mm -hmm. that's what that's gonna be. And like I said, when Claude gets to this point, you have these four specific items locked in. It's really tough to deal with because you also gotta catch him, right? The way that he's gonna use that BMI to kind of get out of some of these situations. Okta picking up a Divine Glaive as well. Mm -hmm. Minoy Fury with the Flicker combination goes through. Uh, Look at them getting whittled down. Sox could be in trouble. There's the knockup though, and he's able to get her out with the BMI. Now Sox is the one to fall into wow. the jungle. Delar trying to get the punches off here, but he's got to respect the damage. I'm offended. Not going to connect. And they might still just pull it back. Still 30 seconds away from this Lord, but RQ finds a kill. Yeah, the swing of the gold too from 30, like 38k for the side of uh, yeah. RQ. Then it swooped all the way up to like a 4,000 gold lead right now just with that one shutdown onto Saxa, which is exactly why RQ was willing to commit that clash. Like Saxa was right in the middle, Skylar having that insane amount of burst, plus Okta too. So it's not going to be easy for, for a boxer to just roll in when you have the Molina on them. Actually, if you take a look at the replay, you might actually catch it. He gets he gets in that uh, that Minoan sphere from uh, Brusco, and at the same time, it really set things up here for both Okta and Skylar to just free hit him. Now, it's going to be the uh, first enhanced Lord of the game. 14 minutes in, RQ Hoshi going to be starting it up. Let's see. Burmese ghouls, do they actually want to try to pull something off? Soxa could come down to it. Nico holding on to that Ruby ultimate once again. RQ knows what's up. Delar also positioning here. They're going to have to go for it. Appraiser's Wrath going to come down. Irad able to secure it, though. Gets the Lord. And now Sox left to his own will fall into the river. Now Blink in trouble. Gets I'm Offended combinationed here. Flickers on out. Delar couldn't do anything but watch. And Sox is the one to fall RQ, ready to make the power play. Oh, I like the attempt there of Soxa to try and steal it with the Lord. Roll in and uh, click that retribution. But, uh, I think Burmese schools kind of uh, was trying to go for maybe a possibly a split push. Like if you look at that that, that particular moment when Soxa was going to try to go in, like you see the Lar and Stitch going to try to make a move on that mid lane, but it's a little bit too late now because 
Enhanced Lord for the side of RRQ. They can take all of the inhibitors here. They don't oh. have a good amount of burst to take down the front lane. line. Yeah. But here comes Irad. Irad gonna get... He's gonna get pulled. He has the immortality, but there's the Minion Fury gonna be jumped in. Look at the damage though coming out from Skylar. Able to get the kill on Soxa. Brusco is the one to fall from Delar though, so it's a one for one for now. Can they hold it together? Blink gonna be able to jump in. Takes quite a bit of damage himself. The flicker comes through, and he's keeping him at bay. Lord finally gonna go down. Nico has to run out of there, buy some time, some space, but he ultimately dies. And they hold on to a sliver of health on this turret for a little bit longer. Delar trying to keep the Minion at bay, man. Banana jumps in, finds the connection. But look at the damage from Delar. The one-two punch isn't enough to get a kill, though. And now RQ looking to end the game, looking to end the series here. Can they do it? Three down for Burmese Ghouls. It looks like they're going to take the discipline route here, Kim, and back off for now. Yeah, if they overcommit there, they could have been punished there by uh, a Stitch, who also has... Um, Almost all the items that the, the a marksman needs right in the late game and by this time like 16 minutes in mid to late game Everybody has what they need to be able to go up against your opponents But what RQ Hoshi has here as compared to Burmese schools is the burst damage You've seen it in the Nana that was like two hits onto Saksa yeah. He also has the, the Athena shield there so even that wasn't able to counter it out And not to mention I, I just noticed his uh, emblem here right now that, that additional um, burn that you get when you pop in your skills uh, from from that emblem from Okna. So kind of yeah. really hard for the tanky frontline here of Burmese schools. They're going to have to rely on uh, Stitch here and even Blink. Then again, same case from what they had in game number one. Great solid frontline, but no one to kind of answer out to the backline here of our Kyoshi because Dilar's busy pushing, right? Dilar's busy pushing. There's no one to take yep. down the Nana, no one to take down Skylar, who is also very mobile here as a Claude. When you're looking at RQ Hoshi here, Skylar 3 and 7, Octa 4 and 8, it, it's, it's tough to deal with, like that kind of damage, because it's very, it's kind of uh, like, even if you're trying to get them down, you have to work through the passive, you have to work through a BMI and a wind of nature. Like there's, there's so many things to fall through, not to mention get through that front line, right? The front line, not to mention the peels available with a Ruby or even a Fredrin, right? So this is going to be a Lord most likely going to the hands of RQ once again, unless Burmese Ghouls can do something about it. But even Soxa just trying to get some of this vision. Yeah. Blink waiting patiently as well. Still Lord less than half health here. They might try to make it a miracle play if they can pull it off. Stitch positioning here is going to be crucial as they oh, approach Delardo. this. But right now, RQ, yeah, Delar taking a ton of damage. He's kind of out of the picture. So now the number's in the advantage for RQ, and that's going to be Lord going in their hands. There's nothing Burmese Cools could do with that, considering the fact that Delar had to go back to heal up. Yeah, the presence of mind too of like Octa and Skylar to think that they had <laughs> their eyes on the Lord. And they were also keeping Delar in check, right? He was trying to go for the mid tower and RQ <laughs> Hoshi knows that. They have all the space that they get. So if they actually took the Lar down there, uh, that wouldn't have been a big thing. But for RQ Hoshi, right? They've they've gotten everything secured. They got all these beefy front lines to kind of contain that Lord Pit. And you see how Skylar was chunking out real fast too. So at this point, everybody has everything that they got to the point that Iran's already chunking uh -oh. up all of the damage. Gets dug in though. Wow. Irad already taking a ton of damage. Immortality going to be popped. Blink as well. Still has his. Can they pull it off? Look at the damage. Delar going to be taken out really quickly. Skylar on the backside still going. Lord's still going to be up here. They want all the kills before they end the game. It's a triple for Skylar. And they take the series in a sweep. Sending Burmese.